Hello everybody, and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. Today, we're going to learn how to sharpen in Photoshop, as well as sharpen select areas of our photograph. Before we begin, you might already realize that I have my duplicate background copy, my black and white adjustment layer, and my black and white points set. If you need a refresher, please visit my YouTube account and the assignment is named Black and White Points Assignment 1. To begin the sharpening process, make sure that you go over to your Layers window and left click on your background copy. By doing so, it should highlight in blue. After you do this, head to the top of the screen where it says Filter. With a left click on Filter and hovering down and over the word Sharpen, and then hovering and left click on the word Smart Sharpen, you will get a pop-up window. The pop-up window will look like this. And we're going to change a few adjustments here. First off, we're going to make our amount all the way up to 500%. The amount means the strength of the sharpening applied to the photo. This might look like overkill, but don't worry, I will show you a trick that will keep you in control of your own photo by lowering the opacity of the specific layer. The next thing we're going to change is the radius. In the radius, I usually only change to 1.5. This is basically the width of the sharpening effect. And last but not least, I'm going to go down to the Remove drop-down menu, left-click, and change it to Lens Blur. With these three things selected, go ahead and click on the OK button. The next thing we need to do is add a layer mask to the photo. You'll notice that when you add adjustment layers, they have a white rectangle that appear by them. These are what is known as layer mask. In order to add a layer mask to the background copy, make sure you go down to the bottom of your layers panel and look for an icon that looks like a circle inside of a rectangle. By left clicking on it, it will apply the layer mask. Now before we do anything else, we want to make sure that we invert the layer mask. So instead of it being white, we want to make it black. By doing so, this will make the sharpening effect hidden. So it will basically hide the sharpening we have on our photo right now and will let us have the option to paint it back in. So make sure that you left click once on the layer mask and go up to image, hover over adjustments, and then hover over and left click on invert. And when I do this, you'll note that it does go back to the normal look that we had before. Now this is where it gets interesting and fun. The next step we're going to do is we're going to go to the left side of the screen and left click on our paintbrush tool. And then before we do anything else, we want to make sure that our brush is on the normal mode, which you can see up here is. And then we want to make sure that we select a bigger brush as well as make sure the hardness of the brush is 0%. So we will left click here, and you'll note that you can change the size by clicking and dragging right here. So I'll just make mine 50 for this example. And our hardness is at 0%, which is exactly where you want it to be. In order to get out of this menu, just go back up to where the paintbrush drop down arrow is and just left click one more time and it will close. Last but not least, before you start painting, make sure that down here, your foreground color is set to white. Now this is where the magic happens. Go over your photo and then go ahead and left click and drag your paintbrush tool. You'll notice that it brings back out the sharpness that was in the original layer mask that we inverted. Pretty cool stuff, right? Now normally when you are working with portraits you don't want to open up the skin pores of a person or show them. Usually you just want to go with the hair, the eyebrows, and 
Although it sounds really strange, just even a tad bit of a highlight or a sharpness coming from the nostrils is never too much of a problem. You just want to make sure it's a light application of the brush to the nostrils though. So just a little bit. Now, you'll notice that by the nostril, maybe I accidentally did a little bit too much. So for example, this is just me goofing up on purpose. And if I have a little bit too much sharpness like that, what I can do in order to get rid of it is I can go back down to my foreground and background color. And you'll notice that my foreground is still white and my background is black. Right up above it is a little arrow tool. It's two arrows going the opposite way. If you left click on it, it will change your foreground brush to a black color. And now what we can do with the black is just go right back over and paint back in the mistake we made. Because as we all know, painting with a black brush is the exact opposite of painting with a white brush. So it basically takes out that extra sharpening we added back into the photo. Now the last thing we want to take note of is we want to make sure that our sharpening isn't too much. And at the moment, you can tell just by the hair, the sharpening seems to be a little bit too much. In order to fix this, make sure you have your background copy still selected. And right above here is the opacity for that layer. By left clicking on it, you'll note that you get a slider. Go ahead and take the slider and go down until the point that the hair seems to blend in with the photo rather than be the focal point of the photo itself. So I actually like it around 45, maybe even a little bit lower. I'm going to go with 40 in this example, I think. And then again, just left click on the down arrow by the opacity bar. And now we're back to normal. So other than that, just one last tip. As I was saying before, it is important to try the paint in the eyebrows a little bit, make them more defined. Let's see here, trying to get it, there we go. And then even sometimes the eyelashes, as well as the eyes. So let's make sure we get the eyes here. And just notice how clean and crisp it becomes, all because I'm doing selective sharpening. The lips are usually important for a photo. So here we go. Let's sharpen the lips back up. And last but not least, jewelry is usually always an important point to focus on as well. So we will sharpen on the earrings. And there we go. So in this tutorial, we learn how to sharpen in selective areas of the photograph. And we also learn how to sharpen the overall image. We also learn how to stay in control by lowering our opacity and we also learn how to change back and forth between black and white color brushes. If there are any questions, please feel free to talk to a lab manager. I hope this tutorial really helped, and have a great week of classes, and we'll see you next week.